Welcome to a new season of the profile. We are ready to go. Where your milestones will be X-rayed and revisited. Yes. Your experiences growing up, academics, social and community development landmarks and challenges will be scanned. The, the, the profile. Where your leadership believe in both the private and public sector will be looked into without the optics of partisan politics. The all-new season of The Profile, exclusive to Search FM 92.3. And a very good morning to you this beautiful, beautiful Saturday morning. It is 15 minutes gone past 10 a.m. And you know what time it is. It is time for that very, very important uh, program. Well, you're welcome to another edition of The Profile, a show where we get to look at the world through the lenses of people who I say have conquered over time. My name is Ibi Moliba Watsunde Jr. And on the profile today is Mr. Cledius Danladi Yakubu, who was born on the 17th of February 1963 in Paiko, Paiko local government area of Niger State. And uh, his uh, first uh, school living certificate was gotten from uh, Kuyan Bana Primary School, Mina. He went on to have a secondary school at the government secondary school, Mina. And then his first degree was at the College of Education, Mina. And um, his uh, employment career started at the government secondary school, Kuta, where he worked as HOD language, uh, languages. And then he went on to have his uh, NYSC uh, down there in Benton State, now called uh, Delta State. And then uh, he also continued with his teaching career at, uh, Tung at uh, government junior secondary school, Tunga Malam, here in Niger State. And um, as someone who, he also struck me as someone who loved education a lot. And so he just didn't stay in education at a teaching level. He also went back to school. And from what I have here, he had, he had to go to school over three times right after the first degree so he went on to had to have more and more and more see let me not bore you with uh, uh you know the profile of uh, mr cladius uh, let's allow uh the let's allow the man himself to tell us who he is good morning sir good morning um i'm happy um for having me here today you're welcome you're welcome thank, thank you so, you so much, much for coming i appreciate it. so let's dive into uh getting to know you where did you exactly grow? Of course, the profile here said uh, you you know grew, you were born in Pico, but where exactly did you grow up, and what were your formative years like? Uh, thank you very much. I basically would say that I grew up in Mina. Hmm. Um, like you said, I was born on Sunday, the 17th day of February, 1963. My mother was then serving in the the um, clinic in Kafinkoro. Kafinkoro is also in Paikoro local government area. But because the health facility uh, was not uh, taking delivery at all times, except to use Ngwanzoma, uh, that's the net local uh, bus attendants. Therefore, she had to leave her place of work and um, moved to Mina or uh, to Paiko. But then the only hospital was in Mina. So those days you had to arrange for a means of transport. There are days that these um, local local trucks we used to call them Kitka or whatever. They, they had um, vehicles like the truck of nowadays and we came or oh, i i was there in the, in the in the in the womb so she came to mina and on getting to to the water that's tunga here i i was giving birth to uh one other thing that happened was not just giving birth to in the truck i came out with a linen all over me what the house has to call Meriga. Normally, when children come out like that, they have it, it's either the placenta or something, something like that, that covers the baby right out. Uh, so I, I was born that way, and that was how uh, my mother gave birth to me. She's of blessed memory now, and it's it's quite some fun. So 
she got transferred from uh, the clinic or the dispensary, so to say, in Kafinkoro to Mina, where she served in the child and maternity clinic, uh, popularly called Asibiti Mata, here in Mina and in uh, Makera Ward. So we had to move to Mina, and that's why I started primary school in Kuyambana Primary School, Mina. I finished in the year 74, after which I was at, I got admitted into a government secondary school, Mina. It was, before we got in, it was Fatima Secondary School. And now it is Father O'Connell Science College. After my secondary education, I taught briefly for a year at the, the Zuberu, uh, at the yeah, Zuberu Primary School in Paiko. It was then St. Martin's Primary School for a year before I went for the NC in College of Education in Mina between 1980 and 1983. All right. Uh, that was quite interesting, you'd agree with me. Thank you so much. Uh, now looking at it for the fact that, um, you know, you had your formative here, years mm. right there in MX in Mina. Yeah, Hopefully yeah. called MX, MX. now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's been, uh, you know, Mina, Niger State, Mina, Niger State. Yeah. And uh, you also mentioned your uh, secondary school. Then let's talk about your first degree. Yeah. Schooling in that time. Mm. Yes, you would have like, you have like a better understanding because it is your experience now. Mm. Schooling in that time, from secondary, primary to secondary to the first certificate, what was the experience like? I, it, was, it was challenging. Challenging in the sense that um, we, at that time, never had so much mentors. We never had, uh, should I put it this way, guardians that will put us through and insist that this is the line we must toe. And so everything that we had to do, we figured it out ourselves. And at, at that time, I think there was what I would refer to as high discipline. Discipline because you were always looking at the teachers and every other person that's your elder as somebody that deserves a lot of respect. And, and, and it wasn't very common then where you have students cheating or students um, uh, being into courtism or students being idle and indolent. Therefore, it was much more discipline, discipline, hard work, hard work. And we were allowed to use our initiatives, not that of our progenitors or our seniors at that time. And so education was just excellent. Uh, the fun was there. The teachers were extremely dedicated. They were really committed to the cause of transferring knowledge to the young ones. Uh, at that time, it, it, it wasn't uh, prevalent where you see a teacher will be so carefree and lackadaisical about uh, carrying out his uh, duties as a teacher. In, that, in my primary school days especially, you found out that you have one teacher and he was much more versatile as we see them then. We saw them as demigods because they know almost everything. They took us through all the subjects. And it is that same teacher that becomes your form master, or your class master. It's that same teacher that you look up to and therefore you, you dare not fail the teacher. You dare not even fail yourself because by the time you do any nonsense you will see nonsense too hmm. so it, it, it was really really great really great uh, no regrets passing through that 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 period all right all right sir and um after your first degree you in your uh, profile here we had uh, uh, you went to you went to your nyse participated in this uh, in the youth service corps and you had to move 
away from all of these things that you had growing up to a completely different climb, I would say. Uh, because if you look at Bendel, uh, the Bendel State, then Bendel State, now Delta State, and what we have in Niger State, it's normal for one to expect that it was distinctively different. How did you manage that? Uh, yes. Um, I served the, the nation after my NCE. That's, that's after my education in college, uh, education, MENA. Because then, um, those with NC used to serve the nation, and 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 so I was pretty young. I was pretty young then. Uh, I was just about twenty when I served. Uh, yes, the the culture was really different. Uh, what I am used to in Mina and what was um, prevalent in the then. Uh, Bender State, but we have this orientation right here that our belief must be anchored only on God, and we remove every fear in our hearts, and we are made to respect cultural relativism. That is, you respect the culture of other people. Uh, that way you would find things much easy and you know our parents brought us up in such a way that you just have to work hard and with that spirit behind no challenge is insurmountable no challenge would pose as a threat to our, our giving out our best at that time so when i when i went to bendel it was really safe that time. I remember very well during the camp, the the governor then was Brigadier General Jerry Jeremiah Hussein. It was fun, even when he visited the camp, real fun. And going for my primary assignment, I was taken as a government property. Then people had respect for government. People had respect for anything that is seen or perceived as instrument of government or the instrumentality of governance. <laughs> On my first day, it was a remote area. Uh, it's Isaleng Pitime uh, at uh, present day Delta. When I got to Iseloku, I thought that was actually the place. But I was told no. No, before then I got to Agbo. Ah, that's not where my, my primary assignment was going to be. I was directed to go to Iseloku. Went to Iseloku. That was not the place. It was a different place, Iseloku Pitime. It is much more of a remote area uh, to compare to Iseloku. But on arrival there, the OB of the town called a council. His council. I was the first copper to arrive. And, he, you know, I was in the midst of these elders who showed you know, appreciation to government for sending in somebody else, a young person, to come into the society and help in molding and shaping uh, the, their children and even bringing in his own culture so that they learn from it. And it was made clear to me that every home of these chiefs was my home. And every one of them had the responsibility of taking care of me. It's, it was a pleasant experience. Not like of today, where you'll be scared of even how to move from one point to, other, to the other. You'll be scared of what happens to you. You'll be scared of even the place of assignment, what happens. On getting there, it was one of the chiefs who quartered me in his house. Um, Chief Conway of Blessed Memory. It, it, it was real fun, real fun, real fun. I I had a room to myself, uh, the toiletry and all that. He was not, he was done with the post and telecommunications, PNT. But each time he came home, I was like the one in charge of the house because he was not resident there. Himself and his family were living in Benin. And I feel good uh -huh. 
I feel good or I felt good then. Uh, all right. So. I, I felt good really really. Mm. Okay. So now let's move back to talking about the career. Uh you started out as a teacher. Yeah. And uh it's evident that you had that you had different institution yeah. and at different levels. Yeah. So what was that something you had always wanted to do? Yes. As a child, I I felt very proud of all the teachers that um taught me and even the headmaster so i was asp- aspiring to be a headmaster my headmaster then was uh, mr john musa of blessed memory yeah he was headmaster in kuyambana primary school each time we saw him we were like more we we, we revered him he would come speak to us even uh, as little as we were then we were not too good in english but when he was when he would be speaking you know we would be feeling really proud and getting to the class our teachers were there oh it was it was just a good experience so we 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 taught i taught at that time that i was going to be a teacher and i was going to head uh, i was going to be a, uh, a class master or yeah class master and i was going to be a headmaster so th- that 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 was always in us Oh, it was in me. All right. And then right after different institution, then came the move from the classroom to the aviation sector. Yeah. That's uh, the then the defunct Nigerian Airway Limited mm. as a cabin, cabin executive, yeah. uh, part of the cabin crew. Mm. And then the move to the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps. Can you walk us through these moves from this stage to this stage to this stage? Yes, I... I had always had the fantasy of flying. Just being in the aircraft, at least, even if it was going to be for adventure. But I had a friend uh, who we were teaching together, Ado Bello. He's also a native of Paiko. He left teaching uh, for Nigeria Airways. And then we, 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 we had then a mentor, um, Elijah Shaba, who was, I think at that time, a director. That influenced the move of Ado Bello from the teaching, from the teaching uh, sector to the aviation sector. And he just came on one holidays and said, oh, that, that was this advert. Uh, cabin executives were required and it was like uh, he was to leave that weekend and the closing day was supposed to be a Monday so what he, he can just go and I will just give it a try so I just I just uh, tried to get the newspaper saw what was required and I then made what was then called uh, just like what well, you have the courier today so the the post office then had uh, a service that was urgent the express service and so i just i just filled it and left it like that we never spoke about it with uh, my childhood friend ado and i just came up one time i was invited to come over to lagos for an interview no to to go over to Kano for an interview uh, I met a lot of persons there. I said, wow, well, how, what exactly is going to happen? Uh, thank God it was a period of holidays, so I never uh, feared maybe being absent from school or what. We did the interview and was called to Lagos that I was successful and we were going back to Keno for training. Uh, that was just the beginning. So. Yes, I had fantasy for flying, and uh, God just brought this opportunity. All right, and then we moved to uh, from the aviation sector to the NSCDC. Yes, I think this is more of a child of circumstances. Uh, initially, I actually loved the uniform job. So when Nigeria Airways came, uh, you can go on flight without. Uh, being in uniform, I was I was excited. 
But from my secondary school days, or even primary school days, what we had then was only the Nigerian police that was really recognized. And I had an, an elder cousin of mine, Dauda Musa Wishishi, who was in what then was called uh, Endoka. They were putting on this short nika and, of, and you know, each time he was going to work, he had this bicycle. Uh, it, it, it's a V bicycle. Uh, we then called it uh, uh, Keke Mata. That's it's for, it's meant for women. It was when I got to service, I saw a lot of the youth, uh, the women in Bender State put it to because they used it in farming. And that V was really where they put all the uh, proceeds from the, the farm. So he would mount on that bicycle of his and, you know, he was really feeling gaga then. Uh, that, that really, <laughs> really got me liking putting on uniform. Uh, that was just the beginning. That was what ignited my, my passion for uniform wearing. So, when Airways was about being liquidated and I felt I wasn't cut out for business then, I said, okay, let me just, just try to dive into this uh, area of uh, life. And, and, and so I, I just applied. I was encouraged by the then Deputy Governor, uh, Dr. Shem Zabai Nuhu, who said, I think they were, they were um, given the, the challenge of enlightening uh, the indigents to come on board. And since it was, it was going to be recognized, it was recognized by government then. And I, I picked up interest. I remember then Honorable Samuel Gomna, who was either his PA or SA, came and spoke to me personally. And I said, why not? Why not? Why not? Uh, it's not that I have gotten engaged anywhere. And so I picked up and I went for civil defense. Uh, we trained in the prison training college Kirikiri in Lagos and that was the beginning of my stay in civil defense really great so now let's take a look at uh, let's let's settle on NSCDC that's okay. the civil defense uh, you becoming a personnel we've talked about you becoming a personnel and then moving through the ranks to becoming a deputy commandant general of the corps what was that journey like challenging I would say uh, at every point I just told myself that even if I was I, I was going to serve uh, the nation in civil defense for a short while I should put in my very best and my first posting uh, was in the national headquarters where what was called then the first capture. I served in the national headquarters for a year plus and in the year 2005, December to be precise, I was transferred to the zonal headquarters here in Mina, Zone D headquarters. And on arrival, I, I took charge of the Department of Administration. I felt it was an opportunity for me to show what deposit was in me. Uh, we had five states under the zone. And it gave me an opportunity to be able to harness all the resources within these five states and also project a very good image of Zone D to the national headquarters. Uh, I, 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 I just loved it then because let me say that all the commandants, even though they, they are supposed to be superior to me, but 
I received all the cooperation I was required. Some of them even addressing me as sir, because they they say in their own words, even in their meeting, that um, I was I, I, they are the kind of officer they would want to have at the Zuma level. But I thank God for all that. It was really beautiful. Wow, it's uh, it's inspiring to hear. Thank you so much. So I would also want to know, or we would want to know, what kept you focused and helped you achieve this height? Yes, you know, my, my mother would always tell me that I should not try to go with the trend in the world. She tried to mold me in such a way that I shouldn't uh, look at what the world is offering. I should anchor every trust and believe in God. And she would never allow me to go into any contest with any, any person. In her own words, that whatever is mine will never pass me by and that people would always look for me. I had that from my primary school days and it has always been working for me. In my class in the primary school at the higher level, I was an assistant class uh, prefect or class captain, class prefect. I, in my secondary school days, I was an assistant house captain and I was a class captain in my final year class 5c so i i never struggled in all that i remember also during my my days in college of education uh, yes i was involved in so many activities uh, i was in the drama i now was in the debating club and i was in the students union as a public relations officer uh, the president then was Abdullah Babasani, and we had our speaker then as uh, um, Aminu Sadu. A lot of a lot of them are around. It was fun. I I didn't struggle. I, in fact, it was Babasani's camp that we belonged to, and they just felt ah, we have this person, this that, and it was overwhelming. Of all the positions contested for, I was unopposed. Others had to start struggling and doing that. And I just looked, could this be what my mother was telling me? Don't struggle, people will look for you. I, 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 was, I was really, really blessed then. And that was how it was. I didn't get to contest for any post in, in Sokoto, but you know, I was involved in so many activities that people were actually trying, some trying to get to know me. I was in the debate, I was in the drama, um, and I came up with a magazine, campus magazine. It was called Min Talk Magazine. Because of my role in some of these uh, drama presentations, one was uh, the trial of Dedan Kemati. I played the lead role of Dedan Kemati. I had a lot of experience because Dedan Kemati was um, um, a, a freedom fighter for the Southern African state. And <laughs> the warder that was there, Salau, would always use whip on me. <laughs> we're friends but like I you know but it brought out the real nature of things then so it was real fun I, 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 I had it on that platform and I I would always remember my mother for telling me don't struggle don't be desperate over anything in life but be dedicated and be consistent that way you'll go forward all right, so while you're listening to The Profile this morning with uh, Mr. 
uh, Cladius Danladi Yakubu. Let's take a quick one of the mic and then when we come back, we'll of course continue this interaction up until the very end. We'll be right back. Welcome to a new season of The Profile. We are ready to go. Where your milestones will be x-rayed and revisited. Yes. Your experiences growing up, academics, academics, social and community development landmarks and challenges will be scanned. The, 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 the Profile. Where your leadership believe in both the private and public sector will be looked into without the optics of partisan politics. The all-new season of The Profile, exclusive to Search FM 92.3. And yes, you welcome back to the profile right here on your dial of champions, 92.3 Switch FM, Campus Radio of the Federal University of Technology, Mina, and I am a Bimo Day, but Batson Dijini. And of course, so we've been having a wonderful interaction with Mr. Cledius Danladi Yakubu, who has been, we have been looking at the world through his own lens. So, sir, you welcome back. Thank you. All right. So, um, we've talked about uh, quite a lot of things. We talked about your career. We've talked about you uh, being in uniform. But uh, I also understand that in all of this, at different point in time, you would have, you know, encountered challenges. Which would you say was the foremost or the heaviest that you can remember as a challenge you came across? Ah, I wouldn't know how to describe it, but I think it was um, a point where we had, we went into a serious turbulence and it was um, um, on flight between Lagos and Abuja. That, that, you know, echoed my belief and trust in God. I had given out, uh, I've given up that I might, I might not come back, I might not land safely. But I surrendered everything to God. I remember then we had the Senate leader, uh, Lucia Lassaraki on board. And, you know, he kept looking at me and I, I was supposed to have to give him assurance and confidence. He spoke house out to me and called me by my son in Yaku. What could that be? And he, he's a vast person. He has flown so, so wide and and you know the aircraft was just as if you 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 you, you take a paper, throw it down. That was how terrible it was. It just went bam, and it was twisting and floating up. But we, the lead captain then, was Captain Wally Otubanjo. I would never forget this experience. People were throwing out the, you find that this, the the hat tracks all open, it was all over. But he kept assuring every one of us. And, you know, he's a very jovial person. Despite the fact that he knew it was a challenge, people were crying and all that, he was assuring that he is a Zaria-trained pilot. And we're like, all of us went through all these trainings now. But this is such a thing that we never saw. It. That's what is called clear air turbulence. And that was what we went into. But it was a very terrible one that almost took off my heart. And here I was. I was supposed to give confidence to every other person that was on board. Ah, that is the biggest challenge I've had. The other challenge was when I went against my mother's wish or will. I contested for... Uh, the chairmanship of the Nigerian Union of Teachers in 1990. You know, I, I sneaked out of the house. My mother never knew. If she knew I was going to run for an election and all that, she would have advised me not to. It, it, it was a statewide thing. I had to travel all along, but I, was, I kept telling her we had program here, program there, and all that. 
And the election took place in Suleja in 1990. <laughs> we went in. You know, when you show me that uh, um, I had served at various capacity, I was the secretary of the Chanchaga branch, and um, I had been involved. Then Abdul Malik Musa was his secretary of Niger State AUT. He had involved me in so many um, activities and so many programs. We presented papers and all that. So I, I, I thought that was all. And, you know, I just said ah, I was going to contest for the state chairmanship. I never consulted my mother. I never consulted um, those who would have given me good advice. I went into contest. You know, we were leading. My camp was leading. All of a sudden, the vote from Suleja came and it just shattered what we had. Suleja and then Kwantogora and zone c zone a i was like ah. but we thank god it was a, a good fight um my people wanted you know to disorganize the place i said no 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 it was a big blow to me it was a big challenge how was i going to look into their face and said i accept everything that happened the margin was very small 50 votes Ah, but I here I was. I must have to do something. I must have to pacify them, especially those from Paikoro, because we we're going to travel back together that same day. We said we we're not going to sleep in Suleja. We didn't sleep the previous night. So we never had the chance of visiting all the delegates and all that. So that posed a very big challenge to me. Uh, since I lost, uh, I took it in good faith. Uh, it was a challenge and till today till when my mother died i don't know if somebody actually told her i never hmm. told her and that was it i kept the challenge to myself I, uh, it was a good lesson all right it was positive mm. all right well on here we'd like to know uh how much of a particular you have been in community development so away from your career how heavy did you also partake in community development and what are some of the things that you've done by yourself in developing a community? I would not say that um, uh, I did, I single-handedly did anything positive to my knowledge within the community I've lived and served. But I know that I am a team player and uh, whatever one or two things that uh, came up uh, I was deeply involved let me start from my community um, here in Mina we used to have this perennial problem of light and I do know that I brought up an initiative and I had tremendous support tremendous moral support and you know there were so many things it wasn't done uh, just at a point I went to the the Nepal what exactly is our problem because each time they kept saying uh, something dropped in the, in the transformer this and that and that so we were buying these items only two by little one after another and by the time i had all these things i had to meet them okay nepa this is what it is how do we go about all that there were some that they say it has to be from their office and all that and i pleaded with with them with one or two other persons that let them fix this thing who we'll pay instrumentally and people actually supported and brought up, uh, assisted in uh, payments. And at the village level, we will always um, organize ourselves, though it's not uh, a singular thing. We talk of roads, we talk of um, repairs of um, 
the institutions in the primary schools in the uh, in the village and also the secondary school there we're giving our best to just um, make things look a semblance of decency where our younger ones go and receive instructions i think it is just little but we, we it might count mm. all right all right definitely sir so now i want to ask what is your leadership style <laughs> I, I i think i want to believe it's participatory i allowed um even the list of my staff to approach me and um, tell me what he thinks we should do or what he thinks is best for the office i have always depended upon the staff i know all through my career i never had the key to the office um, i would always have somebody who would uh, be in the office before me or uh, who i think is saddled with the responsibility of taking care of the office that is where the key will always be and i have assistants that will always have the key uh in civil defense i had of course my oddly who has a spare key too and the office assistant or office um, help who would always do the cleaning and my deputy always will have a key this is uh, to assure them that yes i might not have a fiscal key i can always re rely on my uh, my oddly but they are part of it they will always think and believe that i don't have a key i don't come around uh, but I get a, lo a lot of information. I think putting things in perspective and putting or putting things straight in the office will not make you have any fear of whoever it is. You will always keep your records. You will always um, be sure of what you are doing and you'd always spell it out clearly to your lieutenants that this is where you are going and this is how you expect everyone to behave and i have been grateful i'm grateful to god that all through my career they know who i am and uh, nobody tries to force me into doing what i don't like doing all right so it's sir. been all inclusive okay okay and um Without naming any partisan body, or have you ever been involved in organized politics? No, 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 no. I've, 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 I've never been. All right. Do you have any plans to actively uh, get involved in politics in the future? E no, <laughs> no. But let, 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 let me not be blanket about it. Because... Um, you never can tell when people will come for assistance. You never can tell when you one will feel it is necessary to belong to an organized party so that our people can have a say. That is the only reason where one can venture into politics, but not for elective purpose. For adversary purpose, yes, and for the fact of... Um, trying to make things happen for the community where we stay yes we we'll participate in politics other than that uh, i don't think uh, i'm cut out for politics the way it is played in nigeria all right so sir, what do you do to relax well i don't know if uh, my my hobbies will come in but i play basketball in oh wow yeah in my secondary <laughs> school days i was captain for my team and um i captained also the niger state team secondary school team we were supposed to but at last minute we we couldn't make the the inter-secondary school games then in calabar 
So we, I was captain, I uh, had players, great men like uh, Chibelagu, Ishaku, who coached the Niger State team. And I had Alaji Buhari also in that team. We are contemporaries in basketball. I was the captain then. So I still play basketball. I relax with table tennis. Uh, I have one at home. So I play with my children uh, at times. And sometimes I just get somebody from outside who pays a visit and plays table tennis. And even at home, I have um, a basketball stand that I could exercise anytime I want. And I, I walk, I read very well. I, I read and whatever interesting, whatever I find interesting, I put up on, in my status, uh, the world's up status. So for now, that's all that occupies my time. Awesome, that's very wonderful, sir. Yeah, thank you. But then if you had uh, the opportunity to go back in, ta- in time, <clears throat> I beg your pardon, yeah. and uh, start life over, would you do anything differently? Yes and no. Um, I wouldn't do anything different because already I've had um, some kind of training from my mother and she was trying to or she, she did instill you know contentment in me and hard work. I remember way back uh, when we had to myself and my elder ones would have to maybe take one thing or the other to customers or whatever she I just like hawking she had a mini bakery then in Prada area at that time we were, we were really pretty young in the, in the 70s and we were involved in one or two things. And at home also, she had this uh, petty trading um, table, we we'll call it, and would hawk some of these items. So I, I, I won't change it. But again, if you look at the circumstances now, you don't know how to let your child go out, uh, hawk anything, uh, the times have changed so I will do it different or I am doing it different mm. my children I don't think know what hawking is <laughs> to the glory of God uh, because um, I am made to work for them and um, by the special grace of God he had allowed me to do that they went through school or they are still in school and nothing they have not been the ones um, going out to help in, in, in the family finances. Uh, even though I never had the children in time, I, I had uh, 11 years of wait hmm. to get um, these children. And when they came, God was, was, I don't know how to describe him, I think he's above description. He gave me a set of triplets. At a time? At a time. Two boys and a girl. Hmm. So I don't know how to how to return it to him. I, uh, I think for a minute there, I think we should actually just cheer to that. You'd agree with me? To the glory of God. <laughs> All right, sir. You can go on. Okay. Thank you so much. So, um, I wouldn't... I would do it different in that way. That they would not pass through... Uh, what I experience but I will hammer on the fact that every child should be dedicated we should be consistent in character and uh, we should give our best in all that we do to that extent 30 years ago as you said or whatever we, I will still insist on that awesome so sir before uh, we call the wrap this morning something we do here quite customary is to ask for an advice for young people we know the climbs are different now we know things have changed but from your look of things from then up until now if you were to advise a young person who's just starting out what would you say to them first and foremost 
our belief, our trust should be anchored on God. He is numero uno. He is all, not even numero uno. He is timeless. So believe in God and believe also in what God has entrusted in your hands. Do the very best you can to maintain your integrity at all levels. It pays. It is slow and hurting. But the end of it is always sweet. It's just like the bitter cola. You chew it, it's bitter. Just take a little bit of water. You get some feelings that, uh, you, you know, you can always want to go back to eating the bitter cola. All right. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And... Um, well, as it is right now, you've heard from the man himself, and I am sure that you've picked up one, two, or even three things, because I definitely have picked up a couple of things from this interaction today. Once again, thank you so much for joining us on the profile this morning, sir. And um, it was a really, really wonderful interaction. Thank you. And from all of us at such media, we also want to say thank you for your kind donation in the year 2020 to us here in such a fam we are very very grateful no, no, no. I, I wish i can do more and more and more we we really are grateful thank mm. you so much well and to you or out there listening if you're interested in being on the profile or you know someone who you think we can learn a lot from on the profile like we just did with mr Cledius danladi yakubu do well to reach us or uh, via text messages only on 0806 6556 Three five nine zero eight zero six six five five six three five nine, and we'll get back to you on further details. Once again, thank you so much, sir. And uh, well, that's the end of this edition. You have a wonderful day out there. My name is Abimbo Debatunde Junior, and bye for now. Search TV. Subscribe to Search TV on YouTube. Search for Search TV and click the subscribe button.